ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد we finished off or we ended last week or on monday talking about the talking about alcohol and whether it's najis or not and we talked about uh, the first opinion which is that it's najas and we said that that's the vast majority of the ulama take that opinion the uh, the four madhahib as well as imam uh, ibn hazm from the zahiriyyah and others ibn taymiyyah and, and so on and the first evidence that they mention is the verse innama al khamru wal maysir wal ansab wal azlam rijsun min amal al shaytan um, and the second evidence that they mention is the hadith of uh, abu thalaba in which uh, the Prophet was, was asked about eating from the, uh, the plates and, and cups of Ahl Kitab because they uh, eat uh, pork and they drink alcohol from these utensils or from these plates. So, we, and we mentioned that the verse doesn't apply for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, because it is in and of itself doesn't mean najas. Second of all, we have evidence from the ayah uh, that it, the, the, the rijis isn't mentioned or isn't meant to mean najas, but it actually means un, unclean or that it's something that's filthy. Um, and third, because there's a number of acts that are mentioned here and an act can't be najas. It can be considered unclean or filthy. Um, so just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned the khamar along with gambling and using divining arrows and so on so these are actions and he called it rijis min amal shaytan so it's from the actions or from the something that the shaytan makes the person do um, and so on and there's also a, um, uh, a number of other arguments like that the rijis generally when it's mentioned in the Quran for the most part it refers to something that's unwanted or unclean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to his punishment as rijis upon the kuffar so it's something that is unwanted by them um, and so on so this is uh, why the the ones who say that it's tahir don't accept this ayah as being evidence for for uh, the najasa of uh, alcohol so we'll continue with talking about the evidences that um, those who say that it's najas uh, use <coughs> the next uh, argument that they use is the verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says عَالِيَهُمْ ثِيَابُ سُنُّسٍ خُضْرٌ وَأَسْتَبْرَقٍ وَحُلُّ أَسَاوِرَ مِنْ فِضَّةٍ وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا طَهُورًا Which translates as when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the people of Jannah He says their garments will be of fine green silk and gold embroidery They will be adorned with bracelets of silver and their Lord will give them a pure drink And this is from Surah Al-Insan verse 21 so they say or they argue that here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the khamar of uh, the akhirah and the khamar that will be in Jannah and he referred to it as sharab and tahura or that it's a pure uh, drink. Um, so this by understanding this we would say that uh, the khamar that isn't in the akhirah would be something that's impure or najas. Um, so this is the argument that they, that they make. However, the ones who say that it's it's pure or that it isn't najas, they say or they reject this for a number of in a number of ways. They say the first thing is that um, Allah subhanahu wa taala didn't mention anything in this verse about the khamar. He just said that He will give them a pure drink. So there's no evidence in here that it's actually the khamar of the akhirah. Second of all, um, even if it was the khamar, He referred to it as pure. This doesn't mean that everything other than this drink um, is impure so he just he affirmed that it is pure and this we like we said we know that if um, uh, if something is affirmed as pure this doesn't mean that everything else is impure it just means that this thing is pure thirdly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to it to it as tuhur and like we told like we talked when we were talking about the types of water the majority according to the majority they say that tuhur is something that is pure and it purifies so according to this opinion, then we would say that this is a drink that's pure, and it's also something that purifies. But so we would say about the about the khamar of the dunya, it's it, it's there are the ones who say it's pure say it's pure, but it doesn't purify. We don't use it for for anything uh, for tahara. We don't use it to clean najasa. We don't use it to make wudu. We don't use it to make ghusl or anything like this. 
so with all of these differences or all of these these points they say this this verse is unusable to prove that the khamar of the dunya or the alcohol in the dunya is considered impure and they also state that khamar of the of is considered impure as a means to keep people away from it. They uh, they say that by it being najas, this make, makes people more likely to stay away from it. Um, and I think I actually talked about this last time. But um, so w- what the um, uh, the ones who say that it's tahr say the fact that this is I mean it does something doesn't need to be najas in order to keep people away from it. Um, <clears throat> It's haram to steal, but the thing you're stealing isn't isn't najas. It's haram to eat food that was stolen, but the food, if you steal it, it doesn't all automatically become najas. Um, Allah SWT didn't judge that uh, something, once you steal it or take it um, unjustly or, or in a wrong way, that it becomes najas at this point in a, in a means to keep you away from it. So, yes, we affirm that khamar and drinking khamar is, is haram, definitely, but... The fact that it's haram doesn't necessarily have a tie um, in meaning that it's uh, or proving that it's najas. They also say that khamr is something that's been forbidden um, to consume despite the fact that there's no harm to the person in consuming it. So the fact that uh, you're consuming it and the, the, the only reason left to say that it would be haram is that it's najas. But the ones who say that, um, that it's tahir say this is a completely false argument because to the deen we know there's many uh, many harms of drinking khamar. First of all, <coughs> the person will become unaware of what he's doing. So he might leave the salat, he might take something that doesn't belong to him, he might fall into zina, he might, um, or he'll be uh, away from the, remember, uh, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he might insult someone, he might hurt someone and so on. So all of these are, are harms in the, for, of the deen or to the deen of the person by drinking khamar as well as in the dunya we know that first of all drinking the only reason you become intoxicated is because it affects your brain it can have long term effects um, to the person's brain it can have long term effects to the person's liver uh, and so on of their body it can also let the person become physically harmed you know because they don't know how to walk they don't know how to drive and so on so all of these things are are harms in it so to say that it's only forbidden because it's najas and there's no harm in drinking it in and of itself is completely false. Because so it's it's very easy to say the reason it's 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 haram is because of all the harms that come out of it and actually has nothing to do with it being najas. The next argument that they use is they say that uh, every way of benefiting from khamar has been forbidden in the Sharia. So even um, things that aren't directly drinking it is also forbidden and they mention we've talked about some of these before but we can go over them again um, they mention that uh, the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah that he uh, anahu sami'a rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqulu aam al-fatih wa huwa bi makkah inna allah wa rasulahu harrama bay'a al-khamar wal-mayta wal-khinziri wal-asnam faqila ya rasulullah ara'ayta shuhum al-mayta fa innaha yutla biha al-sufun wa yudhanu biha al-julud wa yastasbihu biha al-nas قال لا هو حرام ثم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عند ذلك قاتل الله اليهود إن الله لما حرم شحومها شحومها جملوه ثم باعوه فأكلوا ثمنه. so they mentioned this hadith from Jabir ibn Abdullah that he said he heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying in the year of al fath when he was in مكة indeed Allah and his messenger have forbidden the sale of alcohol dead meat swine uh, and idols. Then it was said to him, O Messenger of Allah, um, you see that the fat of the dead meat, so from the maita, is used to coat the boats or to, go <coughs> to coat the ships or to keep them waterproof <coughs> and to varnish the hide or when they would make leather they would use the fat in order to, uh, to shine it and people use it for lighting. So he said, no, it is forbidden. Then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Wasallam said, May Allah destroy the Jews when Allah forbade the use of fat of the carcass for them. They melted it down and they sold it and made use of the price. And this hadith is agreed upon and it's Al-Bukhari's is phrasing. So they say here that Allah forbid the drinking of wine but he also forbid the sale of it. So this 
proves that there's something more than just the drinking of it um, which uh, makes it haram. And then they also mention the hadith of Abdullah bin Abbas أن رجلا أهدى لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم راوية من خمر أو راوية خمر فقال له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هل علمت أن الله قد حرمها قال لا فسر إنسانا فقال له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بما سررته فقال أمرته ببيعها فقال إن الذي حرم شربها حرم بيعها ففتح المزاد حتى ذهب ما فيها or this hadith of Abdullah bin Abbas that he said a man presented a container um, or a, a wine like a water skin of wine to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam so the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said do you not know that Allah has forbidden it so the man said no then he whispered to another man so the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to him what did you whisper to him or what secret did you tell him so the man said I told I ordered him or I told him to go sell it so the Prophet ﷺ said indeed the one who has forbidden drinking it has forbidden its sale and then he says then the water skin was opened and it was uh, emptied or opened up until everything that was in it was spilt out and they also mentioned the hadith of uh, Wa'il ibn, ibn Hujr um, that a man asked the Prophet and uh, Tariq ibn Suwayd al-Ju'afi sa'ala al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam عن الخمر فنهاه أو كره أو كره أن يصنع أن يصنعها فقال إنما أصنعها للدواء فقال إنه ليس بدواء ولكنه داء. or this hadith from Wa'il ibn Hujr that he said Tariq ibn Suwayd al-Ju'fi said the, to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or he asked him about alcohol. so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade him or he expressed hatred that it would be made. so he said I only make it for for medicine. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, it, it is not a medicine, it, but indeed it is an ailment, or it, it is an illness. And this is narrated by Muslim. Sorry, and the hadith before is uh, narrated, narrated by Muslim as well. Um, so here they say, we have that it's forbidden to um, drink wine, but it's also forbidden to sell it, and it's also forbidden to use it as a means of uh, a medicine or for, um, for a means of curing. Also, they mention the hadith of uh, Anas ibn Malik, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, su'ila an al khamr, tuttakhadu khalla, qala la, or faqala la. Or from the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about the use of wine and making it into vinegar. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said no. And this is narrated by Muslim as well. So they say here that if it was only forbidden to drink, then we could say that it was, it was haram uh, because of its. Uh, you know, because of the harms that come out of it, but what it's forbidden in every use, or every benefit from it, or in the dunya even, so selling it to get to make money, or using it to make wine, or sorry, to make vinegar out of the wine, or using it to as a, me- a medicinal use, they say this proves that all these things wouldn't be forbidden except for the fact that it's filthy. So these are the arguments that they that they use for this. Um, uh, but. Again, we can we can look at these arguments again and say, first of all, the fact that the Prophet sent them forbid selling it doesn't prove that it's najis because the reason we can't drink it is because of the harms that come from it. So it's not permissible for us to then sell it to someone else and then benefit from the harm that's going to come to them as well. So this doesn't prove that um, it, it doesn't prove anything with regards to whether it's najis or not. And likewise with the um, with the issue of it being used as medicine this is uh, the fact that um, the Prophet ﷺ forbid it doesn't prove that this is because it's najis because um, we know that from the Sharia one of the rules in the Sharia is if something is haram then the Sharia has cut off all means or all ways of getting to that thing that's haram so if people are using wine for medicine <coughs> or alcohol for medicine first of all if they're consuming it then that's haram already and we know that it's haram and if they're using it for other means then having um, this this alcohol specifically as a uh, as a means for, for for medicine or as a cure, first of all, the Prophet Sallam negated that there's any cure in it. So we accept this um, as being uh, as being the truth. There's no there would be no cure in alcohol if the Prophet Sallam forbid um, forbid uh, or, or or negated the fact that it is a cure. He actually stated that it's a it's an illness. Um, also, we would say that. The fact that um, the Prophet 
forbid this is also a means because it if people are making it as a means for medicine then this 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 thing that's haram will be around and it'll be around and, and if it's around the people are more likely to drink it if it's not even around for medicine then the people don't even have a chance to consume it as a drink to, to begin with so the fact that the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith disliked it being made to begin with uh, or forbid that it be made to begin with shows that the reason is so that it's not actually present amongst the people anymore so again this doesn't show um, anything with regards to um, to uh, benefiting from it so this is the first opinion and these are the evidences that they mention as well as the reply from the ones who say that it is Tahir so this second opinion is that alcohol is considered Tahir and this is the opinion of Muhammad ibn Sirin and he's from the Tabi'een it's also the opinion or they call him Rabi'at al-Ra'i and he was from the um, the teachers of Imam Malik rahimahullah. also Al-Laytha ibn Sa'ad and Laytha ibn Sa'ad was from some of the main Imams Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, said about him that he was more knowledgeable than um, Imam Malik uh, and and this is despite the fact that Imam Malik was from the teachers of Imam al-Shafi'i but he still said this about a person other than his teacher that he was more knowledgeable so this shows how great Imam Al-Laytha ibn Sa'ad's knowledge was but then uh, Shafi'i said uh, Al-Layth a'lamu min Malik walakin uh, ashabahu lam yaqumu bih or that the, he, he was more knowledgeable than Imam Malik but his students didn't um, perform their duty in his regard so meaning they didn't spread his knowledge and they didn't take down his opinions as did the students of Imam Malik so from this we can also see the the importance of knowing that the fact that someone is famous doesn't always mean that they're the most knowledgeable and the fact that someone is unknown doesn't mean that they're not knowledgeable uh, there could be many reasons behind it either that just the students of this person were more um, more enthusiastic about spreading the knowledge or this person specifically had people backing him either like if we see nowadays governments and stuff like this they will you know set up specific uh, scholars as being you know famous in a country that would spread the knowledge in that so just because someone becomes famous we can't we need to look at that you know not saying that it's bad but also just because someone is well known it doesn't necessarily always mean that they are the most knowledgeable I've taken this opinion um, so now we'll go into the evidence that uh, that they use so we already talked about well first of all we say that the asal of everything or the default is that everything is tahir until it's proven um, najas and we already went over their replies to the other people's evidence so this now this is specific evidence that they use to show that it's actually tahir um, yeah so the, the first thing that they mentioned is a hadith of Anas ibn Malik uh, that he said كُنْتُ سَاقِ الْقَوْمِ فِي مَنْزَلِ أَبِي طَلْحَ وَكَانَ خَمْرُهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنِ الْفَضِيحِ فَأَمَرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مُنَادِيًا يُنَادِي أَلَا إِنَّ الْخَمْرَ قَدْ حُرِّمَتْ قال فقال لأبو طلحة أخرج فأهرقها فخرجت فهرقتها فجرت في سكك المدينة um, this is a hadith from Anas ibn Malik that he said I was the, the butler or the pourer of drinks in the house of Abu Talha and in those days the drinks or the alcoholic drinks or the khamar was made from dates so the messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam ordered someone to go out um, and announce that, uh, that um, indeed the khamar has been uh, forbidden so Abu Talha said or ordered me to go out and spill the alcohol or spill the wine so I went out and spilled it, and it flowed in the streets of Al Medina. And this is uh, um, this is a uh, hadith is agreed upon, and this is Al Bukhari's phrasing. So they say, um, well, I'll mention again. Or the next hadith is from Abdullah bin Abbas, and the, the same hadith that we talked about earlier, that the um, about when the person told uh, the other person a secret, and the Prophet to, uh, told him the one who forbid it or forbid the drinking of it, also for, forbid its sale. And then the Sahabi went out and poured, he emptied this thing um, just in the middle, like in the middle of where the people were, like outside. Um, like we said, this is narrated by Imam Muslim. So we see here that the Sahaba, when it came to um, dumping out this alcohol, they didn't take any precautions with going and spilling it and then burying it, or spilling it and then 
dumping water over it to wash it or taking it outside of Al-Medina or going to a place where um, where it wouldn't be uh, accessible by the people or that the people wouldn't walk into it or anything like this. So had it been something from Najasa, then this would have been forbidden for them to do because we know that we're supposed to stay away from Najasa in general and if we get it upon our clothes or on our body, then we need to wash it off before we pray and so on. So to put this in the streets of Al-Medina and has it come in this hadith that it was flowing in, in, the, in the streets to this point shows that the Sahaba didn't take any, any care in, in putting it anywhere else because they didn't consider it filthy. Um, and we know, this, that we know that this would be the case from the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that he said that the Prophet sallallahu said اتقوا اللاعنين فقالوا وما اللاعنان قال الذي يتبول في طريق الناس وفي ظلهم أو الذي يتخلى في طريق الناس أو في ظلهم which means Abu Huraira said that the Prophet sallallahu said um, fear or stay away or protect yourself from the two things that bring about a curse or people to curse you so they said and what are these two things that bring about cursing so he said, the one who relieves himself in the paths of the people or in their shade. I mean, this hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim. So here we see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi forbid um, urinating or defecating in, the, in a path or under a, a shade because people will use these areas. They'll be walking in the road or on the, on the sidewalk or stuff like this. And if it's in the shade, well, people will need to stay under the shade in order to, you know, to protect themselves from the heat. So you're making this place filthy for them or inaccessible for them. So if this is the case with a small amount of najasa, like uh, you know someone defecating, then how about if someone's pouring this stuff in the street to the point where it was flowing in it? Would they have done this if they considered najas? Obviously, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's unlikely that they would have, um, have done this at this point. So then, the, but the ones who say it, so this is the evidence that's used by, um, or some of the evidence that's used, but the ones who say that it's najas, they, they say, well, this doesn't apply, first of all, because there were no toilets and no, no plumbing at, at the time. Uh, so they had nowhere like they, they could be poured out of or poured down. And if they were going to take it out of the Medi- Al-Medina, outside of the city, then this would have been um, a hardship on the, on the Muslimin for them to actually have to do. But this is rejected by saying that uh, people had to go out near either outside of a Medina or close to outside of a Medina every day to go to the bathroom. They would go to urinate, they would go out far and to, to, to defecate, they would even go further and sometimes they would have to wait until night time and stuff like this. So if this was something that was put upon the Muslimin to do in order to keep the najasa away, you know, two, three, four, five times a day, then how about something that would have to be done once in order to get rid of something that's haram and najas? Obviously, uh, this wouldn't have been considered a hardship because they could have easily, each person could have taken the stuff with them when they went to go to the washroom and just dumped it out outside of Medina or close to the outskirts and it would have been done and it would have been done forever because they wouldn't then go back to making Qamar. Um, So this is the first response to that. Um, Also some say that it was a small amount of Qamar so it was something that was overlooked or would be easy to um, stay away from. But we know that if if just from the Hadith of Anas alone he's saying that it, it was flowing in the streets then how about if we added to that all of the other uh, Muslimin in the city dumping out their khamar at the same time there's no way that it would have been a, that it would have been the same amount or even less than the najasa of someone urinating or defecating in the city or in the path of a person pouring out khamar even if you look at a say for example someone poured out a one bottle of alcohol it's probably more or, or, or at least similar to when one person goes to the bathroom so how about if this whole city is dumping out all their khamar at one time it's for sure going to uh, flow much more they also say, or they use one last argument to try to refute this, and they say that um, by pouring the khamar out like this, it was a way of letting other people know that it had been forbidden and that people would follow the example of this. Um, so they say this is why it was overlooked, that by if Muslimin were walking and saw that someone else dumped their khamar out, then it would be an encouragement for other people to then dump their khamar out as well. But this is a very you know weak argument. If something was haram, it wouldn't have been made halal just so that people would know the ruling of it especially when the Prophet ﷺ already sent out someone to call out amongst the people that it was haram so he had already taken um, the precautions or taken the means to let people know and people knew they didn't need to see the khamar flowing in the streets in order to um, know that it was haram so this is a very weak argument um, 
to uh, to prove that the, or to to reject this hadith. Also, we know here in these two hadiths that the Sahaba they dumped out the Khamar. but they, there's no command from the Prophet وسلم, or no understanding of the Sahaba to then to dump out these containers and then wash them out. They would just dump out the Khamar and it was done with. But we know and we talked about. I think we talked about this before, is the, the hadith of Salam ibn al-Akwa, that he said, um, he was talking about the um, day of Khaybar, or the, the siege of Khaybar. So he said, فَلَمَّ أَمْسَ النَّاسِ مَسَاءَ الْيَوْمَ الَّذِي فُتِحَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْقَدُوا نِيرَانًا كَثِيرًا فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَا هَذِهِ النِّيرَانِ عَلَى أَيِّ, شي على أي شَيْءٍ تُوْقِدُونَ قَالُوا عَلَى لحم قالوا على اي قال على اي لحم قالوا لحم لحم حمر الانسيه او الحمر الانسيه فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اهرقوها واكسروها فقال رجل يا رسول الله او نهرقوها ونغسلها قال او ذاك So here, or this hadith from Salama ibn al aqwa when he's speaking about the siege of Khaybar, he said, and in the evening of the conquest of the city, the Muslimin, um, uh, they lit large fires. And then so the Prophet said, well, what are these fires for? Uh, uh, or what are these fires, what are you making them for? So the people said, we're, we're cooking meat upon it. So he said, what kind of meat? And the people said, um, donkey meat. So the Prophet ﷺ said, throw away the meat and break the pots. And then so a man said, O Messenger of Allah, can we throw away the meat and wash the pots? So he said, or or do that. And the scenario, it's agreed upon, it's from Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So here we see that when this thing was forbidden, which which we know in the other hadith that we talked about before, that it's that the, the meat of, um, of donkeys is considered rijis. So we see that the Prophet ﷺ told them to dump it out and then to break the pots but then when another man suggested that they just wash the pots he told them or to do that so they had to dump out the meat and wash the pots but with alcohol he only ordered them to dump it out so he didn't actually order them to wash these things so had it been najas he would have told them to dump it out and then wash out the container so all this najasa is out of the container as well um, so these are the two opinions regarding alcohol as well as the evidences that are used for each um, uh, for each article. So these are the two opinions. Is there any questions or what do you guys think about each argument? Which is stronger and why? And so Even the evidence that they used to prove it's not just kind of like the, the uh, how they refute it, it makes it look as you know? Yeah. So even that evidence is refuted very well. So thought evidence is also good. So I think it's still Yeah. Uh, that it's nudges? Yeah. Well, the same thing with when he talked about the blood, remember? And you see, that's even more people took that opinion. I don't know. I think I think I think it would be more to yeah. No, I mean, if, I mean, I can see why, like, because uh, probably the thing, everything is haram has to be najis or something. Maybe, but yeah, when we understand that doesn't always mean that. Exactly. Yeah. Then it, it makes. Yeah. But it's very weak. Yeah. Like, uh, it's very weak. The, the argument, and it's, it's it looks very actually all the evidence it shows that it is dark. Yeah. Well, there is no evidence to say it isn't just in the beginning. I think that alone is enough. Yeah, it's 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 weak to to show that it's najis to begin with. But then when you show there's actually evidence showing it's tahir as well, it kind of to me it very it makes yeah. a very clear argument to me. Okay.